After riding a train for an hour due north from the Big Apple, I am bicycling to the wild woods of Fawnstock State Park to breathe in the spirit of autumn and hold newly fallen leaves. Pavement leads to dirt, and finally I'm into the woods where I park the bike and start to hike. Eventually, I find a spot to start an inquiry. I've come here to ask a question of these leaves. How far do I have to look? How many leaves do I have to gather to have a pretty good chance of finding an atom of carbon that I exhaled last year before these leaves grew in the previous summer? Here's where that question comes from. We metabolically burn carbon in food for energy. The resulting waste gas, CO2, is released with every exhalation, otherwise we would die from this toxin. Ha! To the trees, our poison is their food. Plants don't use their roots to get their greatest nutrient, their body-building carbon. They pluck it from the air itself, using microscopic pores in their leaves. Inside those leaves, carbon atoms from the former CO2 molecules are reorganized to create resplendent molecular arrays, such as the superabundant cellulose molecules. Just a portion of cellulose is shown here, with the carbon atoms as black circles, and all of them came from airborne individual CO2 molecules. When the leaves drop, they carry that carbon to the forest floor. It sounds wild, but perhaps in the leaves around me somewhere, are a few of my carbon atoms that I exhaled, say last winter or spring? If so, where? Science is not nearly advanced enough to be able to track an individual atom of carbon as it emerges from my mouth as CO2, it goes into the air, goes up into a leaf, and then falls down to the forest floor and allows me to say it's right here in the leaf. In fact, Star Trek science could not even do this. So to come up with an answer to my question, I need to use some kind of analysis. And that will include daily food intake of a human being, how the global carbon cycle works, and a simple measurement that I can make right here. Consider our daily food intake that contains carbon that gets converted into exhaled CO2. I will breeze through this six-step analysis, figuring that you can go back and stop the action as you like. One, we start with the standard 2,000 food calories per day. Two, given a typical fraction between calories and dry food, we therefore eat about 440 grams of dry food mass each day. Three, carbon in food is a known percentage, so we daily consume 200 grams of carbon. Four, about 80% of the carbon we eat exits as CO2 molecules, which adds up to 160 grams of carbon exhaled each day. Five, knowing how many breaths we take each day produces the result that about eight milligrams of carbon goes out as CO2 in each exhalation. Six, I convert the eight milligrams of carbon into an amount of CO2 molecules by using what chemists call Avogadro's number. Here's the final result. 400 million trillion CO2 molecules per exhalation. The number boggles the mind. I next turn to the global carbon cycle to figure out what happens to our exhaled CO2. I showed in another video how this data from Hawaii for atmospheric CO2 compares to data from the South Pole. The message is that the CO2 concentrations are on the rise everywhere equally from fossil fuel releases, no matter where those releases occur. The awesome mixing power of the global atmosphere also stirs the CO2 molecules we release by breathing. I could go to a place above the great ice sheets of Antarctica and find in this faraway frigid air molecules that I exhaled. In fact, I have calculated that a ball of air about one meter in diameter the blue circle that my hands are within contains about six billion trillion molecules of CO2 in it. And inside that same ball of air, 
mixed into that huge number are about 50 CO2 molecules from every single one of my recent exhalations. Assuming enough time for the global atmosphere to completely mix, but not so much time that most of my CO2 will have gone elsewhere, say into the ocean. Thus, a particular molecule of my exhaled CO2 could enter a pine tree, for example, in the woods outside a temple of Kyoto, Japan. And the odds of that happening are the same as the odds of that molecule entering a bit of leaf right here in the dry leaves around me in Fawnstock State Park. So what are those odds? I said that I need to make a measurement. Here's the key measurement. I've gathered maple leaves into a bunch and put them on a scale. They're hanging on the scale, and I see that altogether they are five grams. Using one species will allow me to take some simple measurements later and get the surface area of the leaves, and knowing that it's five grams of relatively dry leaf should allow me to calculate fairly accurately the amount of carbon that is in this bunch of leaves. When the leaves completely dry out, they will weigh about one quarter of a gram per average leaf, shown here. Leaves, like food, are about 45% carbon, no coincidence. Thus, I can calculate the amount of carbon in a leaf and its number of carbon atoms. That number is about six billion trillion atoms of carbon in the leaf. That's the same as the number of atoms of carbon in the CO2 molecules in that ball of air about one meter in diameter grabbed from anywhere on Earth. That means that the carbon-based structures of a leaf are built using all the CO2 in that ball of air. And given the mixing ratio I calculated earlier, namely the fact that in that ball of air are 50 atoms of carbon from each of my exhalations, I can now with statistical muscle, make a conclusion. So what this means is that I can come out into the woods, stop anywhere, pick up a leaf, say this maple leaf, and know that there are quite a few atoms of carbon in this leaf, on the average of about 50 for an average size leaf, that came from an exhalation of mine in the year prior to when this leaf grew. And not just any exhalation, but each and every exhalation. Same goes for 50, looks like maybe 75 atoms of carbon in this oak leaf. And the data shows that it's about an area of the size of my thumbnail that will contain an atom of carbon in it. And so when I exhale now, the mixed master atmosphere starts swirling the gas around the planet, and pretty soon, those atoms of CO2 are going into the leaves all over the planet, the Amazon rainforest, the tundra of the far north, everywhere. We are everywhere. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.